But WWE Extreme Rules will be live this Sunday, September 26th on pay-per-view. Sorry, not on pay-per-view. Live on the Peacock Network or whatever (laughs) it is. It's going to be live on Peacock, September 26th, Extreme Rules. And it's going to feature a lot of interesting matchups. We're going to have Liv Morgan taking on Carmella. We're going to have the Usos versus the Street Profits as the Usos defend their WWE SmackDown Tag Team titles. Damian Priest will defend his United States title in a triple threat match against Jeff Hardy and Shamo. Uh, You're also going to have Charlotte Flair putting her Raw Women's title on the line against Alexa Bliss. Roman Reigns versus The Demon. Finn Balor for the WWE Universal title and Becky Lynch, the man returning to pay-per-view, having her first, uh, having her second match actually since uh, she returned at SummerSlam, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's title. Is this all the matches? This is the yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, this is a B pay-per-view, remember? Whoa. So WWE is now doing like B pay-per-views are shorter. They're like about two, two and a half hours long. So they took mercy on us. But Trevor, we, we, we ran down the card, uh just general impressions of this show and kind of the build up to the entire thing. You know what? For the first time I have to I have to admit that I'm looking forward to at least one raw match. <laughs> and, and and that that's not that's saying a lot because I could care less mostly about Raw, but it's it's actually a, a pretty good pay per view. I actually the card if if it lives up to its expectations, it should be a good, a good card. Good pay per view on together. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, one of the glaring things about this pay per view that I noticed was <laughs> the fact that oh wow. Uh, Sorry about that. I, oh God! Ow, we really got to cut that out <laughs> before the people on Spotify and Apple Podcasts <laughs> like stop listening. <laughs> but <clears throat> no, one of the big things, one of the big glaring things that I noticed from this pay per view leading into it was the fact that there were no Extreme Rules matches on this pay per view announced <laughs> at all, and they just kind of just got changed or whatever in the middle of this week, like Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor is the only Extreme Rules match on this entire card. Other than that, there's no, there, there's nothing else. There's no stipulations. So they have a whole pay-per-view dedicated to Extreme Rules. And they, the name of it is Extreme Rules. And they have one Extreme Rules match. And look, I, I will say this. I'm also the guy who gets pissed off at the fact that there's like 15 uh, uh, Hell in a Cell matches every year on the same night. I'm the same guy who gets pissed <laughs> off at that. And you're damn right I am. Because... You can have an entire night where the card is just extreme rules matches, hardcore matches. That's fine. But you're telling me you can – but Hell in a Cell is a special type of stipulation. You can have a few hardcore matches, which I just don't get why you're calling it extreme rules. Just just go back and call it the horror show or something. or, or exactly. bring something stupid, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, bro, the – the big balls of fire. Yeah, bring that back. <laughs> oh, see see, see how we how that how well that does between the eighteen and the thirty five demo. Oh, anyway, um, <laughs> but anyway, so I mean, it, it's been a mediocre build for some of these matches, like the the Usos versus Street Profits. That's n- that's a nothing match. It's gonna be fun to watch, but it's gonna be a nothing match. Um, the probably the best build to any match on this card, uh, in my opinion, has been the uh, Damian Priest, Sheamus, and Jeff Hardy match, which yeah, that's I, go. which I, which I liked. You know, I mean, look, it was it's it was a thing. We'll talk about it, I'm sure. Anyway, so Trevor, let's start off with the first match: Liv Morgan taking on Carmella. What do you think about it? Who wins and why? Um, it's kind of like a lackluster match. Not not because either one of the g- women can't wrestle because they both very talented wrestlers. I just, there's really no build up to it. It's, eh. um, I say Liv wins because in my eyes, you're trying to push, put Liv over. And right now, Carmella is kind of over, but you, the Bella talent is put, is, is put Liv over. So my opinion is Liv wins. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the- Live wins for the same reasons you said. I don't feel like we need to talk about it too much in depth. If you're right. going at because they these two have also already wrestled and Liv has already beaten Carmella a few times over the summer, so this is literally a nothing match. There's nothing that's really going to be accomplished. You just continue Liv's winning streak at this point and 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 hope that they do something with her in the SmackDown Women's Title picture because she 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 deserves it. She's a good worker. Yes. I think she's over with the crowd to an extent that WWE doesn't realize, or people in the back at least don't realize. And 
I, I look, she's one of my favorite things about SmackDown. Yep. And that's saying a lot, considering that this is the show that has Roman Reigns, uh, Becky Lynch, and, and Bianca Belair and the like. Um, one quick thing, uh, one quick aside. Uh, Ibby B in the chat says, I'm usually sleeping at this time in England, but I'm awake and glad to catch the stream. Always enjoy listening to your thoughts, guys. Keep up the great work. Much appreciated, Ibby B. Much appreciated, man. Thank Thanks you. So much. Thank you. Please, please get some sleep when you can, my friend. Uh, but... but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think this is a live Morgan wins, but WWE likely going to serve us with a Carmelo win because oh, they love 50-50 booking, right? Anyway, moving on, the Usos taking on the Street Profits. What do you think? Like you said, uh, should be entertaining. Um, that's a nothing match, though. It should be very entertaining. Usos retain. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say about it. This is going to be the sh one of the shortest pay-per-view reviews we've ever done. Usos win <laughs> lol. Um like this is I love the Street Profits. They're going to go out there and have a very good match. It's going to be entertaining. Oh, yeah, going to match. have a lot of great moves. They are going to put on they could put on a clinic and steal the show, but at, at no point am I going to think that the Usos titles are are in jeopardy because they're they're building this whole thing between the new day and the in the bloodline and i think the titles are an important part of that going into survivor series because you want to have biggie as the wwe champion and the and eventually the new day is going to going to win the tag titles and then on the other side you want to have roman reigns as representing smackdown as the universal champion and the new day right. or sorry the the bloodline rather the usos having the smackdown tag team titles so yeah, I mean, th th that's what makes sense. You would have that Raw and SmackDown dynamic because that's what they do at Survivor Series. But WWE has never before, uh, has all, has sometimes before bent to logic. So who knows? Yeah, true. Um, let's go to this match, which I think is going to be probably one of the best matches of the night. Uh, Damian Priest versus Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy for the U.S. title, a triple threat match. What do you think? Good, great buildup. Like, again, piggybacking off what you said, great buildup. I thought um, I, th I like what they're finally doing with Damian Priest. Uh, I like what they're doing with Sheamus. Um, Jeff Hardy, it, there's a nice little topping on there. Uh, I personally say Damian Priest wins only because you want to keep his momentum. You want to keep keep building him up. But, I mean, this is WWE. You could see a Jeff Hardy title sighting. It's possible. Yeah, I mean that's the other thing. They they could do a thing where 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 Damian Priest doesn't get pinned but loses the title. But I don't see I don't see the logic in that, especially when if they're gonna hot shot a title, they more they're more likely to do it on Raw nowadays than they are on actual pay per view. So right. Uh, so, I mean, I just think it's a great way to sh build up Damian Priest as a monster, have him beat two legends. And, yes, yeah, Sheamus at this point I think is a legend. Like, Sheamus is a great wrestler, was a five-time world champion. Five-time, five-time, five-time. Five. I'm pretty sure he's a five-time. Five-time <laughs> world heavyweight <laughs> champion. At this point, um, you know, Jeff Hardy's had about three or four title reigns. Uh, you know, this is a big way. And, and I think if you emphasize that, if you emphasize the fact that Damian Priest pinned two future Hall of Famers, Two future world champions in the same night, or two former world champions in the same night. That is big for this kid's career. Um, and, it is. And, well, kid, he's like 37. That's big for this guy's <laughs> career. And and it, and it could launch him into that main event picture as well. But uh, one thing that I I have not seen WWE do as of recently is is build people up to that, to that mold, right? Right, right. Because, because, you know, they never mention or they'll sometimes throw it in there, but they'll never really build up the fact that Sheamus has won the title for the world title four times, five times, whatever it is. They don't really mention Jeff Hardy, like re like really mention it being Jeff Hardy is a multiple time world champion and, and Damian Priest is holding his own against this this, so like, weird, this future, too, future like Hall of Famer. I'm just like build them. I'm sorry, just build them up. And, yeah. and and so that the guy who beats them actually looks good at the end of it. Exactly, I, I totally agree with you. Like, it, but it's so weird that they don't like with other wrestlers. They'll say, "Oh, AJ Styles, the former blah 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 champion," or um, just some random person, the former blah, blah blah champion. But they don't do that with Sheamus and um, in in Jeff Hardy. Like, I don't think I've ever really heard that Shame, uh, Jeff Hardy was a former champion, heavyweight champion. Like, yeah, I'm. Yeah. It's just weird about that. That's weird. 
I agree. It is weird, and especially because like they they're always building up how our truth is a ninety nine time at twenty four seven seven eleven uh, n- right. ninety five <laughs> champion, whatever he is. Like they're they're always building that up, and I'm just like, dude, like everyone, I've won the twenty four seven title a bunch of times. Like I've won it a few times. Like come on now. Exactly. I'm pretty sure like, you have a reign there. You don't even remember. I'm pretty sure I do too. Like yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> at this point, everyone's had it. Everyone's like, had it. I'm sure IBB in the chats had it too. <laughs> Gronkowski's had the belt, so come on. Gronkowski's had the belt. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Like it, it is. That belt is that is that is the people's belt. I will say that that the 24 yeah. seven title is the people's belt. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying it. <laughs> everyone, get, everyone gets a piece. Um, yeah. Uh, but we, I think we're in agreement here. Damian Priest probably retains. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, on to our uh, title matches, our our world title matches. First, let's start off with Charlotte Flair taking on Alexa Bliss. This has been built up as Charlotte Flair being uh, the the main, the, the you know, she's the champion. And Alexa Bliss really trying to play mind games with, with Charlotte, with the doll and everything. And it's come off, or it's come across as, as well as... And either of us probably would have uh, thought it would. Not great. Uh, yeah. But a lot of people are thinking this could be a chance for Alexa to get the title. What do you think? So I will I, uh, So I will also agree. It has not come across well, as we've talked about this many, many times. But I will also say this. I've enjoyed the, the promo she's done a little more than I had in the past. Like this much more. This, this, this much more. This, this, this much more. This, this much. Like, this, this one. Put like that. Like, I haven't turned it off immediately. I've turned it off like five minutes in, but not immediately. Um, No, actually, like two minutes in. But still, because uh, I still don't watch wrestling. I still don't watch Raw. But it's still a, it's still a terrible gimmick because they have not nurtured it. They have not like done what they should have done with it but yeah but yeah i think this is gonna be a chance to alexa bliss gets the belt so i say alexa bliss her, her the, it's been better i said you saw the margin right it's like the the thumb the, the fingernail like <laughs> I, wow. it's not much Wow, you and I are on opposite sides of that. How has she done bad? Like, no, Alexa Bliss is turning chicken salad into, into. Well, no, she's turning chicken shit into significantly less smelly chicken shit. No, like, like oh, it's yeah, not great. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't. Did I once say that it was amazing? Proto. No, I said it's a teensy tiny bit better than what it used to be. <laughs> No, it, it, not once did I say it's an amazing gimmick or it was an amazing promo. No, that's not what I say. I I said I have turned it off two minutes in, which is a better than just turn it off immediately. <laughs> but other than that, no, I I think it's I think it's gonna be an interesting match because they both can wrestle. But other than that, no. Alexa this, Bliss no. is my is my favorite. She is my favorite female wrestler in the entire world. Her talents are being wasted. Yes, they wasted are. by the Raw creative team. This gimmick is trash. I, she can't save it. I'm sorry. You're doing a great job, a better job than anyone else on the planet would do. Alexa, this cannot be saved. The dolls are probably gonna gonna going to get a lot in merch sales. I actually I don't even know if they're gonna get a lot in merch sales. With Dave, Uncle Dave Meltzer. Let us know how, what's going on with her merch have, on that doll. Does she have merch at this point? Oh, she has the doll, the doll, and that, okay. which is exactly why I think they they might put the title on her. I think they're going to put the title on her to put her in, in more, more even more so in the limelight for uh, for Monday Night Raw, and so that they can probably try to sell those dolls because they got. I saw pictures; they have like literally barrels full of 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 that uh, Lily doll. So that li- they're trying to get Lily over. They're not, which again is hurting Alexa's chances of getting over. And look, at the end of the day, they're going to have a very good match. These are two of the best performers in the entire world, male or female, in Charlotte and Alexa Bliss. And the reason I say male or female is because sometimes people think that I'm just talking about, oh, well, yeah, they're the best performers, you know, in the women's division. No, these are the best in the entire world, period. So that's why I want to put the emphasis on male or female. 
So I uh, so these two I think are gonna they're gonna end up I think they could and very well end up winning the crowd they could very well end up having a great match I just don't think in the long run it's going to do much for the gimmick I don't think in the long run it's going to do much to to really uh, dig them out of the creative hell that they're in but uh, I'm gonna go with Alexa on this one Alexa Alexa here's there um, all right I think Alexa's winning it. yeah yeah cool. Roman Reigns will, will be taking on. He will be defending his WWE Universal Heavyweight Championship against the Demon, the returning Demon, Finn Balor, in an Extreme Rules match. This, mar this match marks the first time in, I believe, three years to we have seen the Demon, Finn Balor, uh, in, in full makeup. We will see him and in all of his glory. What do you think about the return of the Demon in this capacity and the build-up to this match, Trevor? So the build up to me is like really I don't know. I don't know how else to feel about this match <laughs> because of the fact like okay, so Brock Lesnar is back. Okay, so are they gonna wrestle Brock Brock Lesnar? No, no, he they're starting a program with Finn Balor. So he beat Finn Balor. Does Finn Balor come back? I don't know. It it's so fucking confusing. It's and it started <laughs> it started with like John Cena, like Finn steps up. You put Cena in the mix. Cena loses. You put Finn back in the mix. No, no, no. Wait. Brock's here. And then Finn jumps in. And now Finn is the fiend. Like, I mean, not the fiend. I'm sorry. The um, the, the demon. The demon. And, like, and you're like, okay. So you're wasting something that actually most people enjoy. Like, I enjoy watching the, the demon come out. I think this is a waste. I think this is a waste of the demon of the demon gimmick. I honestly did not no, nothing against either wrestler because I think they both are going to put on a hell of a match. I love Finn Balor, but honestly, I say Roman Reigns wins. I don't think they dropped the belt right now, and, and, yeah. and especially since Brock is in the mix, I don't think they dropped the belt to him right now. Yeah, I'm in fully agreement. I'm in full agreement with you. I think that they're going to end up. You don't bring the demon back like this. You don't. You don't do it. I. I think this was very. Th this is one of those things where WWE just just wanted to give maybe a little shot in the arm and extend this feud a little bit, and then this is the the best way that they saw it fit. Which, yeah, it extends the feud, but what does it do for Balor afterwards? He he lost already. He took an L as Finn Balor. Now you're gonna have him take an L as the Fiend. And I think that I think that is just that that is just what. I confused you. You said the fiend, demon. Oh, sorry, the demon. <laughs> oh my god, you did confuse me. I, uh, yeah, this, this see, this is why. Uh, th this is why I I am uh, the the CEO of Real Take LLC. <laughs> anyway, but uh, but 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 you have the you have this gimmick in the demon who who his whole thing is Finn Balor goes to this place when he knows he absolutely can't lose, and you're gonna have him return just to job to Roman Reigns. And again, they're going to have a great match, whatever, but he's going to lose. But uh, it, but then there's the other thing. You and I are thinking about it logically. But in the world of WWE, wins don't matter. That's the way that no. they truly view things. They they view things in a very short-term uh, uh, bubble. So compounded with the fact that you know they think like that, compounded with the fact that Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns have a title match already set for Crown Jewel in uh, Saudi Arabia, I don't think that we can expect Finn Balor to win. There's a slight chance that if Brock Lesnar gets involved in this match, that this that that could lead to the demon winning but then again then you're then you're kind of undercutting the entire point of the demon because then the demon didn't win Finn Balor the title Brock Lesnar did right so yeah so, i guess yeah all that's being said who do you got and why Roman Reigns <laughs> Roman Reigns because again logically it just makes sense Roman wins lol acknowledge him Oh my god! I'm getting I'm getting way too many of the. I, I tweet anything about a or I, I like respond to tweets about AEW sometimes, and all all these WWE marks have to say is like, acknowledge him like tribal chief. Like I'm just like, dude, you're you're, you're turning Roman heel again, <laughs> again. <laughs> like, stop it! <laughs> stop it. <laughs> um, anyway, 
Let's go to uh, my main event for this pay-per-view. I don't know if it will be. Roman's probably going on last. But Becky Lynch will be defending her SmackDown women's title against Bianca Belair. Becky Lynch returned, obviously, at SummerSlam. She defeated Bianca Belair in an impromptu matchup for the SmackDown women's title. She squashed her, absolutely squashed her. And then the feud has proceeded to see Becky cut some heel promos. She's doing a good job, but it's just weird to see Becky Lynch as a heel. Um, And also we're seeing, we saw just this past week, Becky Lynch actually go to Bianca Belair's hometown and beat her up, which is what WWE does to everyone in their hometown, apparently. Um, What do you think about Becky Lynch in this role and the buildup of this match, Trevor? Um... I don't know. It, like you said, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird to see Becky in this role, even though, like, originally, Becky was supposed to... Originally, when she, Becky turned into the man, it was supposed to be a heel turn. But everyone loved Becky so much and loved the idea of Becky being ruthless, it turned her more into a tweener than just a straight heel or just a straight face. And I thought it was great. But now it seems like she's going to straight heel at this point, and which is cool. But it just looks weird. It that it, it doesn't. It not, it's not that it doesn't fit her, and it's not that she can't pull it off. It's just something that I guess is still relatively new. It's, the paint is still drying on it. You know. You know what I'm saying? So it's not something that is still registering. But I think she's doing a good job with it. It's just odd. Um, the build up for it was interesting, uh, and I mean it's pretty good build up. It's it's gonna be a pretty solid match. Both both women can wrestle, and they're and they're two of the two of the best performers in WWE, honestly. So I think it's gonna be very entertaining. Um, if I'm a betting man, I still say Becky wins though. And yeah, it, it, the reason being off something you said a couple months ago. I think it helps build Bianca Belair makes her a little more ruthless, makes her a little more cunning, gives her takes off that like that pure face that she has and maybe build her into something else. And I, I believe she will have the belt again though. Yeah, she has to. The the, the best part about a baby face is the chase um for the title. Uh, but Becky Lynch is going to win this match, and it is going to be I, – I, I hope it's a better match than they had at SummerSlam. I hope it's a longer match than they had at SummerSlam because otherwise you're kind of burying Bianca at this point. And I would argue that Bianca could use this win at this point, but again, they've just done a terrible job of, of trying to build her up after that that shocking loss at SummerSlam. It, it, I don't know. It just – I, I'm thinking too logically here. Becky wins. They're they're building up for a match, I'm sure, between her and Bianca at at, at Royal Rumble or, or or somewhere down the line. And I think at that point you're going to see her win. Um, but yeah, I think this is a slam dunk. Yeah. For, uh, yeah. But I honestly don't think it's too logical. I think it's just too logical in the world of WWE. But but your your thought process is makes perfect sense. Stanford, Connecticut, where logic goes to die. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching this video from Real Take Sports Talk. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Also, remember to check out our live show every single Thursday at 8 p.m. right here on the YouTube channel. And remember, keep it real.